Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back, I am Templar, and today we are actually going to be talking about how to work out in medieval armor, or a medieval workout, per se. Now, if any of y'all are trapped at home, for example, and because of the COVID-19 and such, or pretty much the pandemic is over, well, this is technically a new exercise for y'all. Now, in truth, I want to actually explain this to y'all, mainly because of the fact the type of form in which we had to understand how did our ancestors do well, a workout in the ancient times, such as the medieval or ancient period. Well, in truth, this can actually be easily understood. How so? Well, in truth, we got a look back then. You know, in truth, though, I will actually be putting this down from different design systems, such as the version of the Romans, the medieval, and Vikings, or as well even the Celts, and so on. Now, many of you might wonder, how did they actually manage to do workouts exactly? Well, in truth, we can actually understand this, in fact. In fact, it would actually be, well, a training type of montage, I guess you could call it. Now, how would this technically look? Well, in general, the forms of which we can understand is that the Romans would have actually done a type of training motion, of which would have been about eight hours march, of which an eight hours a day is, well, <laughs> is kind of extremely difficult, I know, but just get on the treadmill and, well, you can see where you're going to get going. But in truth, we got to understand the fact that while we actually do this type of formation in type of, well, motion design uh, frontage, we got to understand that the Romans had to do a march for eight hours straight. So, I don't know if any of y'all are technically at home right now and, uh, are pretty much just minding their own business, but here's the thing, just do this anytime when you have free time and such, so, like, you have a day off and this and that. So, in truth, it does give a good form of, uh, well, workout. Now, in truth, though, this does help out, uh, the way how it does. Now, in truth, you're gonna need to carry your shield, your pilums and such, and including your own carrying kit, depending on the time of Roman period. So, yeah, in truth, this entire equipment will be of mail and gambeson and all that stuff. Now, though, how did the Romans train when it came to fighting? Well, in truth, they would do the butt-stab type formation. If none of y'all understand of how the butt-stab ideal works, what you had to do is that you had to butt with the shield and stab with the sword. This type of formation type design actually works in cohesion with your neighbors. In doing so, every last one of the Roman soldiers would all butt at the same time and stab and push forward. This design does work. However, they would, well, they would butt the guy right in front of them and stab to the side. Another event that could actually be seen like this is during the Battle of Culloden, and in that type of time period, we had to understand the reason why and how they were doing this to stop the Scottish Charge, or Highland Charge, as it's also known as. Now, in truth, we also do have to understand the motives of how the Romans would have done this. Now, maybe you also might wonder, Templar, I also want to know, uh, what would the weight be on the pilum? Well, the pilum would be so heavy, in fact, it would technically be double the weight design of a Greek javelin. So, yeah, a Roman pilum is extremely heavy compared to the Greek javelin because of that, well, massive weight design on it. However, that would be the heavy pilum, not the light pilum, that of which Roman cataphrics would have, or as well, even a Hestati would have actually used. So, in doing so, there would be different diversions. However, you got to understand the point that you, when it comes to fighting, you pretty much also have to use a type of formation design for it. Now, in truth, you can also do shield formation. How so? Well, if you do it by yourself, it looks kind of stupid. However, it does build up the left arm muscle with your said shield arm. And in doing so, with you lift up the said shield, you can, in the process, build up that type of formation design. In truth, this is how the Romans would have done it in formation design tactic. They would do this for a whole hour straight of, well, shield motion, and in the process, it did build up the arm. They did this every day. However, pretty much not every one of us actually has that much time anymore, since we're not everyone's a military guy. Uh, but yeah. Anyways, though, we can actually understand why they would do this. It would actually build up the strength in the left arm muscle. 
However, though, the, when it came to training, they would always use a wooden sword. Why a wooden sword? Here's the thing. It would be double the weight of a said steel one. And in doing so, it does actually give more finesse. However, it's even stated that the Romans actually were ordered to stab at a certain point of a said pole. This pole would actually be elongated pole design, of which would be marked in a type of scarlet, red, crimson paint or something. We don't know if it would have been paint or if it would have been a type of flag, but there are different versions of it. And of which, they were ordered to actually stab at this certain point. Why stab at this certain point? Well, this would actually give them the better accuracy. How so? Well, here's the thing. Say, if, like, a Celtic warrior is uh, dressed in mail, and he's, well, he clad it on the head with helmet, and he has a shield. So, you got to actually, well, stab him in a certain point. So, in doing so, you got to stab him in the leg. you got to stab him in the arm. In truth, that's what this pole was meant for. They would have three points, or sometimes one, depending on what it would have been. In truth, it's even stated that Roman javelins were even supposed to be thrown at a type of pole, not a hay bale. However, it still is incredible how many people don't realize this. Now, though, let's try and understand this a little more in difference, shall we? Well, in truth, that would actually work. However, what about the Greeks, you might ask? Well, they would technically do the same. For example, the Spartans would have used shield coordination with their ally, and as well, this would be done with, through an entire hour-type course test. And in doing so, they would have actually done javelin throwing for, for a whole hour straight, they would have done uh, pilum work, they would have even done uh, spear work for a whole hour, and swordmanship work for a whole hour. And in doing so, if you think about that, that's a lot of hours you got to put into time because we got to put in the fact of the swordsman type play with the sword that's one hour for a shield work that's two hours for the spear that is three hours and as well with the said javelin that is four hours now in doing so you know I'm hearing me already what other type of ways of training would they have done well they would have also done wrestling and boxing and this would be done for a whole two hours, a whole hour with both. So we gotta put that down, and it will be around six hours. Six hours of working out. So, yeah, that actually sounds horrifying. I know. In fact, this is technically impressive because our modern military doesn't do this because they worry about the person dropping dead. But in truth, this is actually how the ancient Romans and Greeks would have done it. However, uh, most of the time they did not run in their said armor. In fact, it was very rare to see them do runnings in their armor, in fact. But, what can you do? Now, I hear many of you already, but Templar, what about the Celts? Did they do this as well? Yes and no. In truth, the Celts did actually fight in a type of form, in which this type of form was, well training mode, and yes, they did do a training mode. However, it's actually stated that the Celtic people would have actually, well, trained with nothing to wear on their feet. What do I mean by that? Here's the thing. They would get their soles of their feet extremely, well, tough enough, especially when it came to shield bashing. Now, if you don't all understand shield bashing, here's the thing. Celtic warriors in mostly the continental part of Europe, or parts of Britannia, actually used large oval-like shields, or tower shields, also known as they are called. And in doing so, these oval shields, of which the Celts were really famous for, these shields were perfect for bashing, especially with the bottom and the middle. However, that's the thing. The Romans came to fear this. And in doing so, it's actually stated the Celts would have actually used no form of footwear when they did this type of training. Now, how would this training be done? Here's the thing. Uh, say, for example, I'm the Celtic warrior defending myself. I'm the person that's not wearing his shoes. While another Celtic warrior not wearing his shoes would come up and bash me. We would do this a whole hour. A whole hour. He bashed me, I bash him back. He bashed me, I bash him back. This actually kept going on and on for a whole hour. And so, and in doing so, you could probably understand what might happen to their feet. Their feet look like blood. They, it's got scrapes from s rocks and such. But in doing so, it gives them a better form of standing their ground. And in doing so, it's actually stated the Celts actually trained like this. <laughs> now, it doesn't imagine if you did that, actually, because uh, that would be kind of horrifying. 
But now, what about swordsmanship? The Celts practice that. Yes, from an early age up until they reach the era of manhood. And in doing so, if none of y'all understand the era of manhood, it will be at the age of 12. Now, in doing so, while being at the age of 12, it's actually stated that the said Celtic warriors would do swordsmanship type combat prior before it, and as well even after it. This design actually got built into their muscle design, especially when they were coming at with a said sword. This design would have actually helped them with it. And in doing so, the swords were actually made out of wood, yes. And in doing so, this was extremely heavy duty type swords. Now, here's the thing, if you were to bash someone's arm with it, it will technically break if it has a sharpened edge. But, you gotta understand the fact that while we have to understand this, we kinda also have to understand the fact that these warriors have to actually use a type of shield that's heavy enough. Now, as well, they would do javelin throwing, they would do sling throwing, they would technically do archery and such. This is technically all that they would do. In truth, this is actually what they would have done. Now, cavalry, they would have actually done also. They would have gotten better with it over time. And in truth, what would they would have uh, technically hit? Well, in truth, they would have actually uh, used their sword to cut at a piece of wood. In truth, this would just be a beam pole that would actually just be in the ground. However, this was a little different because you actually had to also hit the said part of a small scarf. This scarf-like limestone design of which you had to either, you actually had to hit above it, not below it. Now why does this mean in fact? Here's the thing, that little scarf piece is supposed to represent the neck. In truth, you're supposed to, in fact this is kind of well, imagine say I'm the beam pole itself. The beam pole is, well, just sitting, standing there or something like that. And in doing so, what it would happen is, that little scarf piece would be flowing in the wind. Well, this would actually explain where my head is. Because above that scarf is my neck. This is kind of a good example of what might happen to a Roman legionnaire in truth in general. However, some people state it was painted with a form of limestone. We're not truly uncertain if that was too uh, correct or not. But in truth, we do understand that many people would have probably done this ancient times. But now, what about the medieval period, you might ask? Well, I'm glad you asked. Because during the medieval period, there were technically forms of training. Just with the Vikings and also with the knight. How so? Well, the following would have actually been done. In truth, they would have actually run a mile a day in their armor. A mile a day. Not non-stop. You had to run a mile a day in your armor every day. And that goes with the knight or viking. They would have done this to actually build up their strength and muscle to the armor. How would this be done? Well, first you gotta wear your gambeson, then you gotta wear your mail, and then you gotta wear, well, anything that type of armor would come next. For example, say laminar or plate armor of the later medieval period, such as the cuirass and other forms of armor. In truth, this also means you gotta wear your helmet, you gotta put on your shield on your back, and also you gotta run with your sword and such. This actually builds up your muscle tissue to actually training with it. Now, how much? How now? <clears throat> now, how far is a mile in per se? Well, in truth, if we were to actually measure it up, we'd be somewhere between half an hour and an hour. So. In truth, that's kind of actually hard to actually understand. However, some people say it's only this amount of minutes. However, that's not counting for the fact that your terrain. In truth, if I was to run a mile in, say, a uh, said area full of woodlands, for example, it would be a lot harder, or hilly terrain and such. And in truth, the system of the mile is a lot different in comparison of the ancient world because the terming of the mile means of a said region and such. And as well, there would be a major type of run. Now, just imagine though, if you also had to wear uh, historically accurate footwear. Historically accurate footwear had no form of textile design underneath, meaning you couldn't get any traction underneath the said slippery, well, shoes. So you'd technically be sliding on the said uh, grass every few minutes. So. Yeah, good luck with that, trying to do that every time, uh, especially on a treadmill. But, yeah, uh, so probably do a run for about half an hour, just to be safe. Now, in doing so, you state, like, 
Now, in truth, uh, many of you might ask, Templar, am I supposed to drink water while I do this? Uh, there have been no historical documents stating that you're supposed to, so probably not. However, uh, I so I technically take uh, drink swigs of water whenever I can after my said uh, trial. So yeah. However, that's the thing. They were actually preparing them for a said long journey run, and in doing so, you don't have enough choice to or chance to actually drink any water or anything like that, especially on the battlefield, or especially if you're running away from the field of battle. No, so it does imagine that. You don't have a chance of drinking water, and in doing so, you got to keep running. So, yeah, got to keep running, so you have no choice to drink any water. You just got to survive. So, yeah. Now, in truth, what type of weapons and equipment would they actually train with? Well, I'm glad you asked. Now, let's first take a look at the Viking. we got to understand he has to wear his armor in all times. Yes, they had to do what they call an armor-wearing test throughout the entire event. However, if they were to say, uh, well, train with a sword and such, what would happen is they would take off their armor while they do this. Now, in truth though, sometimes they did wear their armor when they did train. It just depends. For example, this can be seen with shield play, sword play, spears, and so on. Now, the medieval knight, on the other hand, I have not seen him probably do that as much, because I mostly only see him probably wear gamison or forms of plate armor. In truth, though, we do understand though that they were able to actually manage to do that. Now, let's take first take a look at the said medieval Viking. Now, what would exactly the Viking be doing mostly? Well, he would have to do sword fighting for a whole hour straight, the same with shield movement for a whole hour straight, and as well then archery for a whole hour, spear technique for a whole hour, of which this also included throwing a said spear, and as well axe throwing and axe usage for a whole hour. So, just imagine how dangerous that is. But this depended on the weapons he would technically use. This doesn't mean he owned all those weapons. It means only the weapons he could actually manage to afford. So, in truth, say like I'm a Viking warrior, and in truth my weapons are the axe and a sword. So, yeah, we got to understand of how that would be used. And as well, I would even have to use a shield. So, just imagine me running with my mail and armor and such, and as well, I then have to do a type of training course. Now, in truth though, there were wooden axes, but these actually were very hard to find today. But it's actually stated that this wooden axe would have been a small, like a, well, a stick with a unsharpened, uh, I want to say metal, but some historians actually say it might have actually been a stone head that was attached to the said, well, end of the said, well, uh, shaft. Now, how would this work, for example? Well, in truth, uh, it would break a bone or two if you think about it. So in truth, you got to understand on how to actually get use of the weapon, and in truth, this would have been a double, technically, the weight of the said weapon. So, in... So I can see how they could have used the uh, stone rather than a piece of metal. So, yeah, in fact, metal was actually extremely expensive back then compared to today. So we gotta understand that more today. So, why is it that we have to understand this? Well, in truth, if you were to actually run a mile a day in your said male armor and your equipment, and in doing so, it's kind of near impossible sometimes. It's like sometimes it's actually been reported that some people drop dead because of the extreme heat during the Middle Eastern campaigns, or as we call them, the Crusades. So we got to put that also into a refreshment course on history. Now, why do we have to understand that? Well, here's the thing. Would you want to, in the process, die in the Crusades right when you're technically marching to battle? I certainly wouldn't. So, yeah, in fact, we can understand this. And which we had to understand that's also the same with the said medieval knight. The medieval knights would have done this also. They would have actually done this with their swords, their shields and such, and as well used them in a type of form of combat. However, it's actually stated that noblemen were a lot different comparing that. How so? Well, noblemen only trained with either a mace or a sword and a shield. So pretty much that's about it until we get to the very late medieval period, so yeah. So, what also about the medieval archer, you might ask? Well, in truth, the medieval archer would actually lift weights. 
why weights? Here's the thing. These weights would actually be extremely heavy. How heavy? Here's the thing. Uh, imagine a kid uh, at the age of five, or as soon as he's able to stand, uh, which I gotta say five or six, able to pick up a 30-pound dumbbell when he's so young. And in truth, this is actually a major law that was passed by Edward the Longshanks, who stated the following, that every man that is able to fight is must actually train with the bow. And in doof, he actually had every serf, every free man, actually train with a bow, including the Welsh, his one of his enemies that he conquered. In truth, it actually did prove uh, an effective form. And as well, the Welsh were incredible longbowmen, and the incredible part is, the Welsh actually trained with the bow from sun for a whole, uh, about three hours straight, and that's saying something and while actually lifting up the dumbbell later for a whole hour. Now, this dumbbell would go from 30 to 50 pounds from depending on how far you can get it. And in truth, this could actually extremely mess up your muscles. However, this was stated to have been a heavy stone back then, but today we got dumbbells so you don't need to kill yourself. Now, that is actually incredibly dangerous though, here's the thing. You have to lift that said dumbbell for a whole hour with one arm, then go to your other arm and do it with 30 pound dumbbells. And so on and so on. For a whole hour. And here's the thing, if you all don't understand how messed up that is, here's the thing. Think of my bicep right now. My bicep, uh, I am proud of it, yes, but the thing is, our ancestors' biceps were incredibly, uh, looked like something a, uh, I want to say, maybe a, uh, <laughs> A bodybuilder's bicep, probably. So that's for medieval archers. Just think how horrifying that would be if you went up against him, especially. And imagine of how good his right arm would be. That arm is the one weapon is because he could do a very strong uppercut with it uh, and probably kill you in the process. So uh, yeah, we could probably understand why. However, that brings me to another form of weightlifting in for the medieval period. How so? Well, in truth, you think the medieval knight would have actually not lifted weights? Here's the thing, he would have. In fact, he would have lifted a massive, well, uh, I wouldn't call it a... I want to call it a medicine ball, but I wouldn't call it a medicine ball. Because this was not a medicine ball. This was just a big piece of stone. Literally. A huge, massive, uh, sculpted piece of stone. In fact, if you all want to know what a massive uh, type of uh, stone it would have looked like, uh, technically think of a trebuchet, for example, that of which, those trebuchet, uh, projectiles that have been released on there, that's how big it would have looked like. In fact, that would technically look something like this globe here. So just imagine me lifting a said heavy type of stone through in and throughout with my fellow knights. In fact, they would pass it around. How so? Well, here's something. I take it, pass it. <laughs> he takes it and pass it, and I gotta pass it. In truth, this builds up a type of mass. And yes, they did actually lift it like so. <laughs> oh man. Because I don't own a medicine ball, but here's the thing. If we had to weigh that around in the estimated type form, it would technically near identify to around a hundred pounds. A hundred pounds. Just imagine what your arms would look like as a nobleman. So just imagine that. Heavy armor heavy equipment, and heavy training equipment especially, uh, put that all together, and technically the medieval knight technically looks like a jacked version of a supermodel. So yeah, now I hear many already. Uh, Templar, did they also do push-ups and also uh, leg raises and such and any of the modern type of versions? No, they did not do push-ups that I know of. Mainly because of the fact it, uh, if you do push-ups in mail, it's like a restriction. Literally. I've tried this before, and I can only get five push-ups compared to when I do it regularly. So just imagine, if you were to accidentally do it in mail, you could probably in the process damage your shoulder blades. So, yeah, I'm not about to go and kill myself. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Don't get me wrong, you can probably do this yourselves, especially at home with the whole event going on nowadays. But, uh, please, for the love of God, please do not go overboard with it. Please.
because that's the last thing I want is my channel get hate messages from a bunch of people who went too far. Uh, but yeah. Now, if any of you all want to actually learn more about this, let me know in the comments below. I'll be happy to answer them as soon as possible. As well, guys, also subscribe to our channel and click that bell button for notifications. And as well, also, well, check out our other channels that which we've actually managed to create. Told Texas Frontiersmen and including Uncovering Hidden History. Of which I will be putting some videos on them very soon. Anyways, guys, like and subscribe and as well, also click our Facebook page. So, see y'all in the next one. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.